It's been over a month since Indian troops crossed into Chinese territory in the border region and the resulting standoff is still ongoing. How long can China and India avoid war in the Himalayas? What will the implications be? China's Ministry of National Defense said in a statement released late Thursday night that India must, quote, give up the illusion of its delaying tactic and immediately withdraw its trespassing troops to the Indian side of the boundary. What's the purpose of this message? Is it an ultimatum to India? With India in its political season, how will its domestic politics affect the potential for conflict? What role is rising populism playing in the standoff? The BRICS summit will start in about a month, but right now the question remains about how the standoff could impact the summit and will Prime Minister Modi come to Xiamen? Well, seven weeks into the China-Indian border crisis, an increasingly caustic rhetoric means that the potential for escalation remains high. China has vowed to take all necessary measures to protect its legitimate and lawful rights and interests with regard to the movement of Indian troops. Although the standoff between Indian and Chinese armies at Doklam still shows no signs of letting up, both sides continue to look for a way to end the impasse without resorting to violence. To talk about the confrontation and cooperation between China and India today, I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Professor M. D. Nalapat from Manipal University and Mr. Rong Ying, Vice President of the China Institute of International Studies. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Zhou Yue. So, a remote corner of the Himalayas has become a topic of in contention over the past one month because of the Indian troops' incursion into what Chinese considered its own territory and no signs of withdrawing. Uh, what exactly caused uh, this to happen in the first place? I want your take on this, both of you. Mr. Rong, you first. I think the, uh, the fact is very clear. As the, uh, my government's position paper uh, says uh, that the two days ago, it happened in June uh, and uh, when the Chinese uh, border troops, the Chinese side, would like to construct a, a road meant to improve the transportation and uh, also, the uh, uh, in 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 uh, in the area, Chinese as regarded as indisputable uh, 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 part of its uh, its, its its land, mm. and uh, by the uh, at the side of a uh, border, the border between China and India, the in the uh, uh, the section uh, we call second section, which is delimit delimited. It's mm. this part of this border, border. This part of boundary is different from the other uh, parts of the other section of the boundary which is not delimited. Mm. So for China, it was in a very serious sort of uh, uh, incident. It's an incident of different, totally different nature from the previous incursions mm. happened in other sectors mm. of the boundary uh, which w was, w were not I mean, delimited. Mm. Because unlike uh, conflicts before, standoff before, this time the border limits is actually clear. Both sides agreed on the border between exactly. China and Bhutan. That, that is, a, that is a, the real problem. That is, from Chinese perspective, uh, the India border troops crossed a section of uh, boundary between China and India that is delimited and recognized by mm. the two governments. So for Chinese, it's wow. a very serious incident mm. that has been, its territory has been sort mm. of uh, uh, undermined or uh, invaded, if I can say. So, so this is a big issue. But why did the Indian authorities decide to do this thing at such a cost and cause such a controversy? What do you think, Mr. Nalapak? Well, I'd like to say that the India-China border is unfortunately has not been properly delimited for a very long time. Mm. In fact, uh, but not that section. Uh, well, I'm saying that the entire border has not been delimited for a very long time. Yeah. And as far as I understand, that particular area is actually, uh, according to the Bhutanese, Bhutanese, and according to us also, we also believe that is Bhutanese. Mm. So in that situation, I think it would have been good 
if China, India and Bhutan were to sit together and then the Chinese could present the proof and all the evidence that is actually Chinese. And that, I think, would be the best way to follow. But according to the Chinese, what is outrageous, it is a dispute between China and Bhutan. Why the Indian troops get to the territory of Bhutan to solve a contentious dispute, if it is, between China and Bhutan? Well, I'd simply like to say that, you know, uh, India has had a very long historical, cultural relationship with Bhutan. Bhutan is our very friendly neighbor. And in that situation, we have been helping the Bhutanese in various ways, including economic development and including their security. So it's only natural that as a very good friend, India would also uh, get involved in this kind of situation. If I may, I think uh, the incident now with uh, Professor Malabat's uh, sort of a take, we, we are talking about uh, two contentious issues. Mm. One, the boundary, this part of the, this section, whether it's, whether it's eliminated, eliminated, or not. eliminated or not. The second thing is whether India has a right to intervene uh, if it is an, in, I mean, dispute. To help yeah, to what help he calls a, a, a friend, country, yeah, Bhutan, a country, Bhutan, for security a concern. sovereign, independent state. So this is the crux. I think if we, if the two sides can sort, or if between us today, if we can sort out these two Issues, I guess the, uh, the, 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 the incident or the crisis that we can, but, can be... But done. obviously, uh, obviously, you two have different understandings exactly, about the that, justifications. Exactly. The, uh, the, the democ the, the, that section, uh, the second section, is de delimited, de de demilited. I According mean, to is, the 1819 agreement between exactly, China exactly. And, and British government, that's true. back then, Indian was still a colony of British. Well, I'd That's like a force, the Chinese understanding of this. Well, you know, I think the Chinese very rightly have been quite negative about the British role in the subcontinent and the British role in China. Mm. And I think, you know, quite frankly, the British role has been in many respects very negative. So I'm, the, the fact is that according to our understanding, in 2012, there was a clear understanding that this particular uh, area of dispute will be discussed between India, China and Bhutan. And as far as we are concerned, that 2012 agreement still stands. Is there a 2012 agreement on that? Um, the, uh, yes, agreement? there are a lot of uh, talk and I think of reports from the Indian press about that 2012 understanding. Let me make it, make it very clear. To the best of my knowledge, this is a kind of uh, unofficial sort of understanding between the two SR, mm. special representatives between China and India. And, but that understanding just meant for the record of, 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 that, of the talk, previous talks that have been going on for many years, mm. number one. Number two, there's also an understanding that that, that agreement or whatever you call mm. should not make public, should not be made public because it is just meant for to keep the record. So it's very vague agreement. And the third, very kind. the most important thing is that even though the boundary it's of that sector may not have been uh, put on the, I mean, there's no sign post and other, but the, the, the agreement was there. Mm. When it start, where it started, and which uh, the alignment of the goal, uh, which direction it goes, this is for sure. So I think the other uh, international law, in terms of legality, India government and the Chinese government should have the right and should inherit that understanding, mm. even though the understanding of the SR goes okay. there will be. Uh, agree, uh, uh, discussion. Let's talk that, about that, that, is, that. That is not going to affect the legality. Let's talk about the cause agreement. of this dispute, the road construction on the Chinese territory. India maintained it has changed the status quo and posed a security threat to India. Uh, but the Chinese don't understand what kind of security threat is that? Well, I'd like to say that uh, we don't understand exactly why that road is so important to Chinese security. But Chinese have been building zones all over the country, so that's everywhere. Precise, no, but the point, but you know, but I don't think the Chinese have been uh, talking in terms of using 
quote unquote all possible means. Now in international parlance all possible means is a very emotive phrase and these are three words that are very seldom used. Now from our point of view that road is very close to what we call the chicken's neck. Mm. It's a very narrow strip of territory linking the rest of India to eastern India. Mm. So we are always very conscious about any kind of a, of a change in the ground situation in the surrounding area of the chicken's neck. So it is in that context that we have requested our Mr. Chinese Rao, friends how would you to want avoid to con to completing that road. To Mr. I Nadal do have point. to respond. <laughs> Let me make it very clear. I think the purpose of building that road is very clear and open to, uh, to the public and particularly to the India side because and well before the start of the construction of, of, of the road, the Chinese side, mm. according to the practice of border management, notified it twice. Put on. Yeah. No, to notify the Indian side that, look, we are going to build that road. And then uh, when China's, the Chinese side started to build that road, June the 16th, and two days later, and so within the notification, when the, when the first notification and start of the, the, the road, it was about, around more than one month. The Indian side did nothing. But when the Chinese side started to build the road, the June the 16th, and then two days later, 18th, the Chinese, Indian border troops came with a big number, mm. with weapons and dough boozers. So I, we really do not know. Why India did that? If India had any reservations, if India have any question, they should utilize, they should use that mechanism of border management and tell the Indian Chinese so side. So, the, according to Mr. Rong, India has the pre-knowledge of this road construction, but why do you want to use this as an excuse to incur into Chinese territory? Well, At least that is something China controls. Uh, as I said quite clearly, for us, we are not sure if it is Bhutanese territory of or whose territory it is quite very frankly but i simply want to say that in you know india and china have a lot to gain from each other today for example there's a good trade of around 71 billion dollars of which is 50 billion dollars in china's favor mm. my estimate which is a, uh, is that about 300 billion dollars of trade mm. is possible in india and china mm. if you go to india today you'll find chinese mobile systems are all over Chinese networks are now, frankly, very strong in our electronics. We'll come back to the economic area of this part of the discussion later on. But I still want to talk about the dispute part. If there is dispute between China and Bhutan about the border, why can't China and Bhutan sit down and have a negotiation? What is India's stance on this? Yeah, because for, from, the, from the Chinese perspective, this Dunglang area is not a disputed area. And the Bhutanese side, that between China and Bhutan, there were also border, bond, border talks. And um, we already, I think, have 24 20, 20 rounds. rounds. Yeah, 21 since 1980s. And there's a kind of a general consensus and understanding mm -hmm. where the disputes are and how the management and which side they are under control. So for, from, from Chinese perspective and I think from the Bhutanese perspective, it's not a big deal. But can Bhutan independently get into talks with China to solve this? That's a very good question. And I think if Bhutan has its own problem, if and reservations, it should have raised. But it's nothing. It has nothing to do with India. And, and China and always India worried should not take that India has been pulling the strings of Bhutan, so that Bhutan cannot, on itself, solve this problem with China. You know, I'd like to say that that I think is a very unfair uh, statement to make uh, about our Bhutanese friends. They're an extremely proud people, an ancient people with a long culture. But they are a sovereign country. Uh, of course. And the point is that we have a lot of cultural links with them. And we have a lot of security links with them. And as far as I understand, these links are with the full consent of the, the, the Bhutanese government. So I think our two governments have been working together for a very long time. As indeed we have been working, for example, in Bangladesh. We recently signed an agreement in which Bangladesh and India can send uh, you know, trucks uh, and people through each other's territory. So India has very friendly relations with a lot of countries and Bhutan is one of them. 
I, I think that uh, Professor Malabad made a very good point. I think Bhutanese are very proud of people and they are independent uh, uh, sovereign state. And if you look at the statement uh, 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 about the incident, uh, re regarding the incident issued by the Bhutanese side, mm. and uh, th this is literally a kind of a refute of the statement by the Indian government regarding the, the, the account of this issue. So you, because the, the, the Indian side, they the were Bhutanese, in consultation. The Bhutanese and Indians may not be on the exact same page on how to solve it. That is like, at least my understanding. And if you look at the, uh, the, 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 and the very fact that India has a special, close, specially close relationship with Bhutan does not mm. give them any reason or right legally and okay. I think politically to intervene on the issue between China and, uh, and Bhutan. So the, I think our Indian colleagues have mm. really got an answer to this question. Mm. And the more this crisis goes on, the more, unfortunately, the Bhutan poor, I mean, our, our Bhutanese right. uh, friends um, draw on, the more the situation would be become so complicated. Where this, this crisis a, will lead up to and how to solve this, will it uh, jeopardize the bigger picture of China-Indian cooperation? We'll be talking about this on dialogue later on on this broadcast. So, Mr. Nalapat, the Chinese um, foreign ministry, defense ministry have been very firm about this. China will not tolerate Indians' incursion any longer. In your opinion, what's the end game will be look like? Well, you know, I'd like to say that I do hope that as two countries that have been friendly for thousands of years, that we can conduct this issue in a way in which there is no any kind of a thinking of resort to the military option. Mm. Now, for example, there are locations in the Kashmir, for example, which we are belong to us, but which, in fact, the Chinese are there and the Chinese and Pakistanis are there. Mm. But we don't talk the language of war. We don't talk the language of battle. Mm. We would like to have the language of discussion and conciliation. So but on this issue also, we hope that the language of, uh, but of did force you get the point, will not be used. But did you get the point that the Chinese will not stand idle if the Indian troops remain where it is now with this equipment and personnel? You know, I'd like to say that that is a decision to be taken by the Chinese side. From the Indian side, it is very, very clear that the Indian side regard this particular road as being a problem for its security. I personally don't believe that this road is at all important to the security of China. So even if this road construction is postponed by several years, so, I don't see any harm to China. Mr. Rong, do you think it is possible Indian troops withdraw from that part and China stop construction of the road? Is that something we are bargaining for? I think China has made it very clear the preconditions and the basis for meaningful dialogue or talks of this issue is the Indian side should and uh, unilaterally uh, without condition to draw, draw the, uh, uh, the, the, in the troops back to its, its side. I think uh, Professor Malabad talks about security concerns and I'm very glad that uh, uh, this is an uh, this is an uh, made it public. This is an issue that uh, an excuse for the intervention of it, which is from the Chinese side. Well, personally, I think, and all, I hope I think my, the viewers are also well. It will be very dangerous mm. because it's a security concern of a particular country has, should never at the cost of at, the at the cost and others, and it should never be an excuse for a kind of a intervention or crossing uh, diminutive mm. borders. This is very dangerous. If other countries, I mean, take this, use the same uh, excuse to intervene an issue like that, it will cause total chaos and huge mm. problem. And we had enough problems in the, world, in the region and the world. And I don't think it's in the interest of India and in the, in, in the region and the world to m misuse mm. this issue. Everybody had an security excuse, but that, that does not mean it should be the excuse, I mean, the, the excuse or pretext for intervening. The Chinese always consider the theme of the world is peace and development. Both China and India are fast developing economies. Should the two countries let this topic, let this issue stand in the way of their economic development at which cost? Well, I would say that certain other countries 
will be very happy if this creates, escalates into a conflict because it will also affect, uh, apart from the fact that very frankly those countries will get much more leverage over India and over China if the two of us are fighting, is also the fact about the Indian market which is a very big market and frankly Chinese companies are today very high quality whether it's telecom, whether it's energy systems, whether it's infrastructure building, it's not 10 years ago. Today your companies are high quality and low cost mm. and therefore there's a very good chance that the Indian market will have more and more Chinese participation. This will not be to the liking of other countries whose companies are active in our market. So there will be a lot of rejoicing by countries other than India and China if this unfortunately goes out of control. Does also China think that China-Indian cooperation economically, politically are important that we shouldn't be taken hostage by this issue? Exactly, that's why we thought that the Indian side should immediately <laughs> correct this mistake by withdrawing and, uh, uh, and uh, its troops, border troops, so that this issue can be solved in a, in a peaceful and uh, prompt manner. And I agree, I think uh, the confrontation uh, between China and India and uh, the, both of us will be losers and mm. cooperation and uh, both of us, we were going to gain. That is why we said that we, 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 we would like, we, we have exercised such a kind of uh, long-term and constraints and forbearance actually and for waiting for the, China, the, the Indian side to, to, to make a correct decision and to correct this mistake and, uh, and so that this issue, uh, this incident could be resolved uh, in quickly mm. and, uh, and peacefully uh, in for the benefit for the, for the common benefit. In September, of, of, China of the two sides. will play host to the BRIC Nation Summit in Xiamen, uh, a coastal city in China. Uh, could this incident um, upset the agenda of the BRIC Summit? And will Prime Minister Narendra Modi come to China? Well, you know, I, I don't know what the, my, my Prime Minister will do because he will take a decision based on his own view and the view of his government. But I only would like to say that. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm very much hopeful that he will come to China and hopefully there will be a discussion between him and the Chinese leadership and hopefully we can find an amicable situation such that both sides uh, are, are remain firm in mm. their commitment to each other. What is the political climate now within India? Uh, I believe that Prime Minister Modi is also under a lot of pressures not to back down, not to appear soft to the Chinese. What is the political climate right now? Well, it's not a question of appearing soft to, the, to, to anybody, but the reality is, frankly, it's a question of helping an old friend, in this case Bhutan. And of course, you know, Professor Rong has been talking about the Bhutanese having a different view. Well, I haven't heard any statement or read any statement by them that indicates that they have any different view from the, uh, from the view that we have got. But you are helping a friend by infringing on the core interests of another big power country. I would only like to say that, as I said, the, we are not convinced that uh, of, of exactly whose land that is or that we are really infringing upon that particular interest. And I would like to point out throughout the India-China border, several thousand such incidents have taken place mm. over the past. And it's therefore very important that both of us as big countries, we firmly align the border in a mutually agreeable manner. And, and, and yes, please. Yeah, this, I think you're right because uh, Along the boundary areas, I mean, there are incidents, I mean, many years because, but this time, as I said at the very beginning, and also my government made it very clear, mm. this is different. Mm. This is different from the, all the previous incursions, previous incident mm. that has, I mean, happened between the two sides on the un limit delimited border but this time it's delimited mm. this is this is in a totally different it's in a different nature and the border the Bhutanese uh, question is also different because um, for I think for whatever reason that does not give any Indian side for uh, I mean either out of the close in close relation special relationship or because of the security concern to intervene mm. an issue between uh, two independent sovereign state mm. because that does not help the issue mm. does not help India 
does not help the peace and stability of the region. And finally, I want to talk about the trust between two major uh, powers in, in Asia. Uh, it seems there is still a lack of trust between China and India about the strategic intent towards one another. That's why the border issue hasn't been solved for so many years. What does it take to improve the mutual trust between two major neighbors, China and India? I think the border issues has been there for so many years. And thank goodness, uh, the, uh, if we look at the past uh, um, decades, and particularly I think since, since 2003, the two governments realize and, and I mean reached an agreement that it should be an, uh, seeking commonly, uh, take, uh, jointly a political approach. That's why we had a special representative mechanism. Mm. That's why we had a kind of framework, political para parameters and guidelines for solving issues. That's why we all work together to honor and implement the green part. But that is why we are able to achieve peace and, and, and tranquility on the border, on the border region, on the borders. But this time it's different. The Indian side, as, as we have been talking about this, they send to boundary troops crossing the border. Mm. That because is, they you know, consider this their... This is change the, the rules, change the rule of this game, mm. causing big problem. That's, what, that's, a pro that's, that's, that's the problem we're having. So we have different readings of strategies of both. Well, I'd just like to point out that, I mean, in my view, this is a minor incident in a faraway location, quite frankly, and it would be a terrible shame if the future number one of the globe and the future number three of the globe come into a conflict which will only benefit other countries because of what, in my view, and is a minor incident. And it will do harm to both. A, a terrible harm to both. So my own complete belief is that you have a very wise leadership in China. We have a very good leadership in India. And these two wise leaders, my hope is that they will meet, take the long view, take mm. the broad view, and not a narrow view, and we will be able to resolve this issue in such a way that we can create more trust. And let, let me again point out, I'm glad CGTN is giving a chance to an Indian scholar for this, because the fact is, we hardly know each other. China and India don't know each other. Mm. The contact is so limited. And that is very difficult, because the reason is the Chinese are friendly to India, Indians are friendly to China. Mm. The more we know each other, the better we will understand and trust each other. All right. And on that very hopeful note, we end this uh, charged debate uh, on this very contentious issue. Thank you very much, Mr. Rong. And Great thank pleasure. you, Mr. Nalapat. You've been watching Dialogue here on CGTN. I'm Joe in Beijing. Goodbye.